Hi everyone. So today's agenda is knowing a little bit more about the error logging framework. In many projects, we have uh, separate objects just for logging the errors that we face. Now, when we try to insert such records in that error log object and when we are using try catch block, although the record gets inserted, we could see its ID in the debug log. But when we try finding that record, we just don't, don't find it for some reason. So we are going to see why it happens and how can it be resolved. So let's quickly get started. Now, all I'm going to start with is by showing you a object in my org, which is called app log. Whenever an error or exception happens in Apex, I'm going to log that error and store it in this object called app log. Right now, there are no records in it. So let's quickly start. Let's say I'm in my developer console. I go to anonymous window. And what am I doing is Okay, simple thing, what we are doing is, first we are creating an instance of contact, entering its first name, and we are not writing the last name in it. And we are doing this uh, intentionally so that we get an error. When that error gets catched, caught in this uh, catch block, it comes inside, displays that exception, creates a record, and in that record of app log, the description field of the app log is saved as the error message that we get. So let's quickly try and execute this. Okay. So I'm just going to execute it. Now this is the debug log that we had shown over here. As you could see system.debug e triple slash and then the error message. So this is that E triple slash and the error message. Now let's quickly go in our app log and let's check if that record got inserted. So one record got inserted, you could see here, right? Now let's do one thing. Now let's say if someone is doing something on the UI, although this error gets logged in the error log object, but when it has to do something with the UI, how would the user come to know, right? Whether there is an error or not, if we have caught it. We need to inform the user that something has went wrong. So for that, we need to throw the exception. So let's add a statement here called throw new apex exception. Now this apex exception, I have created a generic class like this and just extended the exception here and that is it. Afterwards, what I could do is I could just use this Apex exception. I could say throw new Apex exception. You are a custom error message and the E. E is this exception that we have got. Okay, so that's it that I'm doing. Now, this time also, what is expected is it would throw this error as in it would show us this in a box, pop-up box. And in the backend, what it should do is it should create a record of app log. So that is the expected outcome. But let's see what happens. So I'm executing this. Okay. So first thing that we expected is fulfilled. What we expected is it would show us a custom box, pop-up box, custom apex error occurred. Now, why is that? Because this is the message that I'd given with double exclamation. So that is what we see here, double exclamation and this error message. Other thing that we expected was it would create a record of app log. So let's refresh and check. No, it did not create any record of app log. Now, what is the reason? Before that, let's do one thing. Let's go to the developer console again. And this time let's comment out this throw. Okay. And let's execute it. Now this time it did not show us that pop-up box because we had not thrown the exception. But anyhow, let's check. Okay. So this is E exception. Now again, let's go to the log and let's refresh it. 
Now this time you will see the log got generated. But you will also notice one more thing. See, the app log that was initially created was AL0008. Then there was an app log created called 9, but that is no more present over here. Because that is the time when we were using that throw statement. And then we, we commented out the throw statement and again we have the app log 10, right? So what just happened? So what happens is, whenever you use a throw statement, right? What happened in the back end is, you went and you inserted this app log record. It did go and insert it and that's why we had app log 9. But then, as soon as I write the throw new apex exception, what it does is, it rolls back the created record that it created. So that is why you cannot see app log 9 at all. Even if you try and query that, you won't be able to see that. Even if you get its ID over here and then try to open that record somehow, you cannot see that. So because we used throw, that is why that had got rolled back and that record AL0009 is no more visible. After that, when we commented out throw and we normally executed, again, it shows us the next app log. So now what is the solution for this? Let's say I always want to catch the error. I want to throw it and I want to log it as well. Now what happens is when you create used throw, as I told you, the rollback happens. But if you don't want the record to be rolled back, then we could have these two things in separate transactions. Now you would say that if we want these two things in two separate transactions, we could use future. So when we use a future method, like what I'll do is this thing that I have inserting a record in app log, I can use in future method and then I can just throw exception. So the separate transaction for creating app log would happen side by side. And before that, we we'll just throw the exception. But no, it will not work. And I'll show you the reason exactly why. We, when we go to future method, it's clearly written that future jobs queued by a transaction aren't processed if the transaction rolls back. So that is what is exactly happening. When we are using throw new exception, it is getting rolled back. So even if I put this un under the you know future method, it is not going to work. So then what is the other option? The answer to this is platform events. We need to make, make platform events on the trigger of that platform event. I'm going to uh, create the app log and then I would just throw exception. So let me show you exactly how. The first and foremost thing that you note, need to note down about when you create an event you need to make sure that the published behavior of that platform event is published immediately. Now, when you create a platform event, you have two options. One is publish after commit and one is publish immediately. If you do this publish after commit, mind it, it is not going to work. Again, it will roll back and because this is after commit, so the transaction never gets committed and that's why your platform event is never going to get called. So you have to create a platform event with publish immediately option. Now, what have I done in my public uh, platform event is I've simply created a description field. Now, let me go here. This is my new code. Again, what I'm doing here is I'm creating an instance of contact, putting its first name, intentionally not putting the last name so that we get an error, putting a catch block here, just displaying the debug message, which shows us that exception, creating a platform event like I showed you, the one that I've created here. In that, I had a field called description. So I'm putting my exception uh, exceptions a message in that description field and all I'm doing is publishing that event and then like what we did I'm just throwing apex exception the custom error message and the exception as the parameter that is it I'm doing then what am I doing in my platform event trigger so coming to my platform event trigger 
the moment it gets triggered which is always after insert it comes inside it displays the description that it has in the platform events description field then i'm creating a instance of app log putting that platform events description into the app logs description and inserting that app log record which is this so now let's quickly run this Okay, so let's run this. Now this time, by the way, we have the throw and still it is going to create an app log. So it throwed the exception. It is showing us the exception. Now let's go to the debug log and by the way, how to generate the debug log for a platform event is something that I've all, oh, by mistake, I deleted it. Okay, let's do it again. How to generate a uh, debug log for a platform event is something that I've created a video on. If you want, you can just refer to that video. I'm again going to run this. Okay, the exception got thrown. Let me check the debug log of it. Here is the exception message. Let me go to the debug logs. And here we go. Let's check the debug log. Let's open it. And there were three slashes that I put in the debug. So I'll search by that. Here it is. So our description shows our e error message, right? So let's go to app log now. Now you will see two new records got generated. One was when I mistakenly deleted the log and the second was again. Yeah. So now the app log got generated even after we used throw statement. So here it is, as you could see. So if it helped, please like, share and subscribe, guys. I really need your support. Also, I've started one more YouTube channel. This channel is called Smile With Me and it's linked on my Instagram bio. I'm sure you'll get a smile on your face after you watch that channel's videos. So go ahead, go have views on it and like, share and subscribe that channel too. Thank you. Bye.